Oh, good morning. And it's the proper 18, I believe, this day in the season after Pentecost. And well, happy Labor Day weekend. And we're glad everybody's here. Lisa's connecting. So once Lisa connects, um, maybe you can start us off with some music, Maria. morning. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, to trust in you with all our hearts. For as you always resist the proud who confide in their own strength, so you never forsake those who make their boast of your mercy. 
Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from the book of Isaiah. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For water shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. And the burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 146. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Put not your trust in rulers, nor in any child of earth, for there is no help in them. When they breathe their last, they return to earth, and in that day their thoughts perish. Happy are they who have the God of Jacob for their help, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the seas, and all that is in them, who keeps his promise forever, who gives justice to those who are oppressed and food to those who hunger. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord cares for the stranger. He sustains the orphan and the widow, but frustrates the ways of the wicked. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, throughout all generations. Hallelujah. Our second reading is a reading from the epistle of James. My brothers and sisters, do you with your acts of favoritism really believe in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ? For if a person with gold rings and in fine clothes comes into your assembly, and if a poor person in dirty clothes also comes in, and if you take notice of the one wearing the fine clothes and say, have a seat here, please. While to the one who is poor, you say, stand there or sit at my feet. Have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters. Has not God chosen the poor in the world to be rich in faith and to be heirs of the kingdom that he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor. Is it not the rich who oppress you? Is it not they who drag you into court? Is it not they who blaspheme the excellent name that was invoked over you? You do well if you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture. You shall love your neighbor as self. If you show partiality, you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law, but fails in one point, has become accountable for all of it. For the one who said, you shall not commit adultery, also said, you shall not murder. Now, if you do not commit adultery, but if you murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So speak and so act as those who are to be judged by the law of liberty. For judgment will be without mercy to anyone who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith, but do not have works? Can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and eat your fill and yet you do not supply their bodily needs, what is the good of that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. The word of the Lord.
gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there, yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him, and she came down and bowed at his feet. Now, the woman was a Gentile, a Syrophoenician origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. And Jesus said to her, let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to dogs. But she answered him, sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then Jesus said to her, for saying that you may go, the demon has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child lying on the bed and the demon gone. Then Jesus returned from the Tyre of the region of Tyre and went by the way of Sidon towards the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. They brought to him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech and they begged him to lay his hand on him. Jesus took him aside in private away from the crowd and put his fingers into his ears. And Jesus spat and touched his tongue. Then looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to them, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And immediately his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one. But the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. For some years now, there's been some commercials on TV, and I think maybe many of you would be familiar with them. They're put out by the Mars Candy Company advertising for the Snickers candy bar. Now, I know you, you, those of you who've seen them will know what I'm talking about. The ad shows somebody getting angry or irritable and not like themselves at all. And their companion says, whoa, whoa, no. You're better when you eat something, so eat this Snickers bar. 
And after eating it, the out of sorts person returns to their former self and everyone lives happily ever after. Now, there's a word that these commercials made so famous that it can now be found even in dictionaries. It's a clever word which conveys a feeling familiar to, to many of us. You grow hungry and you're growing hungrier and you're getting more irritable with every passing moment. Your hunger is making you increasingly upset. You're angry. No, the commercial says you're hangry. Hangry. That's the word made by combining the words hungry and angry. And in this, these ads, the hangry person needs some kind of healing for their physical hunger. So I asked myself this week after seeing that commercial last weekend, can being hangry, growing hungrier and more irritable every minute, can that be used for explaining more than physical hunger? Here enters Jesus. He is human. And I'm going to say he's probably tired because the gospel says he went in secrecy to a location that was probably somewhere out of the way. Not wanting anyone to know where he was, Jesus and the disciples had just come from such busy weeks. He had been rejected in his hometown, so he left and traveled away. Then the crowds found him and they were hungry. So he used his um, gifts from God and his divine spirit and fed thousands. 5,000 or more. Then he spent some time instructing his followers on how to go and preach God's good news. He tried to send them out, taking nothing for their journey. And in the meantime, John the Baptist had been beheaded. Whoa, busy weeks indeed. And they didn't stop there. For wherever he and his disciples went, the news about him got there sooner than he did. So the crowds formed, increasingly hungry and wanting more from Jesus, even when he crossed the sea to escape and get away from them. The temple authorities were watching with interest his movements, and they were becoming more anxious about what he was doing and probably about what he was all about. In the sixth chapter of Mark, the one before our reading today, Mark says this, when they had crossed over, they landed at Genezareth and anchored there. And as soon as they got out of the boat, people recognized Jesus. They ran throughout that whole region and carried the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages, towns, countryside, they placed the sick in the marketplaces and they begged Jesus to let them touch even the edge of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. Hmm. Busy days. You know, word about him probably spread so fast because in the beginning of chapter seven that we heard last week, Jesus had had an argument with the temple authorities, the Pharisees, who had traveled all the way from Jerusalem to find and to gather around Jesus. They argued with him there about what defiled the person, people eating with unwashed hands or not. And as Jesus usually is good at doing, he spun their questions around about defilement when he tells everyone that could hear that what we spew out of ourselves and words and actions is what causes defilement. Now, quick to get away after that confrontation, the Gospel of Mark tells us that Jesus and his disciples set off again, probably to escape all this. And that's where we meet him in Mark's chapter seven today. Mark's gospel makes me think that Jesus, being human and being probably tired, was hangry. Those who sought after him and wouldn't leave him alone were growing hungrier and hungrier for him to perform their, his cures for them, you know, his healings we've heard about, his feeding, all, all those things and more. And I'm I can just imagine that Jesus and his disciples were probably just as hungry as the crowds were. Hungry for rest, hungry for solitude, hungry to recharge. My guess is that Jesus was probably as much or, or maybe even more hungrier, no, 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 hangrier than the crowds that were hungry for him. He was just not acting as himself in the dialogue we heard today. Even when in another town and a spot away from the public again, Jesus opened the speech of a deaf man. 
And the gospel tells us he sighed. Jesus sighed. You know, Jesus said to tell no one, don't spread the word about him. And I've often wondered why he says that. And maybe he's saying, I've had enough for now. Give me a break. Now I'm putting words in his mouth, but I wonder if that's not his hangry showing today. You know, Jesus says a lot of things. He says a lot of things recorded in history and scripture. And there's also a lot he does not say. You know, and today is the day that both what he says and what he does not say meet together. I wish he had never said to the Syrophoenician woman what he did. His hangry had him using bitter, defiling words in protest to her demands to heal her daughter, even though Jesus would have been familiar with Isaiah, which was our first reading today that says God cares for the stranger. But Jesus sounded irritable. He had had enough trouble dealing with the demanding crowds in his own country, his own territory, mostly among the Jewish people. And now while he's trying to get away, out pops this woman somewhere, someone who Jesus couldn't help but notice, scripture says, probably disturbing him. In those days, women did just not come and approach and talk to men. And not only was this a woman breaking that rule, but she was an outsider from the crowds. She was a Gentile. She was of Syrophoenician origin. So that makes three strikes against her. She was female. She was from the other side of the tracks. And she was not Jewish. Now, some have said in scripture and scholarly readings that this woman's status as a woman, Gentile, and foreigner would render her triply marginalized, especially as compared to the other two groups who are going to appear in, in most of the later part of this same chapter in Mark's gospel. Well, the thing that I wish Jesus had said this time was that I really wish the author of Mark's gospel had named this woman. Jesus doesn't say her name or at least it's not recorded any place we can find in scripture. And this Syrophoenician woman, this unnamed hero, changes the world forever for us. For in her words, I think she pushes Jesus to go outside of his boundaries. And as a risk taker, she believes deeply that even just the crumbs of his ministry were good enough to make her daughter well just the crumbs needed for someone in the world who was outside of the comfort zone Jesus has, outside of Jesus's location. Just the crumbs, usually trashed out to the dogs. To give those crumbs, Jesus would have to stop being hangry and eat his own words. Why? I think Jesus is going to have to cross his preconceived notions and boundaries. You know, those boundaries during the time of Jesus weren't marked very openly with signs or crossings or soldiers, but I think the boundaries we read about in scripture and in history are very, very clear. You can see it in some of today's that the, the, gospel, that the boundaries are made clear when people of the region, especially the faces of the people, meet Jesus. They were probably distinct in their dress and their regions were as clear as to who lived here and there because they were a tribal people. Most were Gentiles. You know, boundaries I think were part of living then as they are now in most of the world. And this woman needed, wanted healing for her daughter and she herself had to cross boundaries. And she ran the risk of the door being slammed in her face. She loved her child, and she wanted healing for her daughter so that her child would not suffer anymore. The woman demonstrates profound faith, and she believes that her daughter is worthy of God's love and worthy of the attention of Jesus. And because of that, her daughter is healed. Could we consider this the expansion of the ministry of Jesus? Could could it be that God's kingdom is so huge, so big, 
so unexpectedly gracious and so wildly inclusive that it even takes the hangry Jesus maybe a moment or two to really grasp what is happening, especially when she brings the kingdom of God to him and says it could be different. Can it be this way? She's not only a good mama caring for her child, but the Syrophoenician woman is a good teacher. She's stretching Jesus to grow and learn. Did Mark preserve this story for us to see that God through Jesus was now ex expanding the divine ministry beyond the Jewish world? Was God reaching out through Jesus now to the non-Jewish world? Because his teachings and his actions were being shared with this outsider, triply marginalized woman, the one who pushed Jesus into realizing that his teaching and his saving love was for all people, all people, not just for the Jewish people. She summoned Jesus. She took a risk and she enlarged his ministry, a ministry now with people who were once strangers Maybe they were even enemies. So I call her a hero. Especially I call her a hero when I see that Mark uses her as a symbol to show that all people are worthy in God's eyes. No matter where they are from, no matter what gender they are. For me, she represents us all. No matter what, no matter where, no matter how, no matter, no matter, no matter at all. Through her, through her, the Gospel of Mark shows us dramatically that all are worthy of God's love and all are worthy of the attention of Jesus, even if all we ask for is the crumbs. Amen. Our service continues with the Nicene Creed found on page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer. I invite you to join Deb and I as we read together and affirm our beliefs in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the, By the power, power of the Holy, Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and provided. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of, of the, the world, world to come. Amen. Amen. The prayers of the people this morning are Form 6, found on page 392. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our, our families, families, friends, and, and neighbors and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For, for all, all who work, work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. 
for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and the unity of the Church of God. For all, for all who, who proclaim the gospel and all who seek, seek the, the truth. truth. For our presiding bishop and for all bishops and other ministers. For, for all, all who, who serve God, God in his, his church. church. For the special needs and concerns of congregation. We want to send out prayers to Reverend Nihal Delanerol, who is a dear friend of ours and of, of the cluster. And recovering from open heart surgery. <clears throat> we want to give uh, prayers and, and safe travel to those who are traveling this holiday weekend. We also ask prayers for those not attending our service today and may join us later. Those who are uh, suffering from the struggles of a natural disaster, especially those in New Orleans who are still without power in this very intense heat. And we'd also like to include the animals who suffer also that are dealing with fires and floods. Hear us, Lord. For your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings in this life. We give thanks for those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries this week, for our children and our pets, for our cluster churches, St. Andrews and St. James, and for those of us, those who follow us on, on Facebook. And this morning, I would like to just put out the names of Winnie and Robin from California, Bonnie, Catherine, Helen, it's so good to see that you're there. It's also good to see Lisa, too. And Lisa, too. We haven't seen everybody who's here today. We give thanks for all that we are. We keep Jesus Christ, our Lord. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And, and praise, praise your name, name forever, forever and ever. We pray for all who have died and that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Very special prayers for our state trooper, Sergeant Brian Mull and his family as we mourn his loss. And I'd like to also mention a couple of iconic people in the television industry, one of which was Ed Asner, who passed away on the 29th. And Willard Scott, who was NBC Today's show Weatherman. Um, I absolutely loved him. And some people may not realize that he was also Bozo the Clown and he was Ronald McDonald. So prayers for his family, his daughters. In 1894, Labor Day became a federal holiday. So they on this prayer that I'd like to share with you from prayerist.com. Dear God, on this Labor Day, we give you thanks for all those who work in stores and markets, in mines and fields, on ships and planes, in the armed forces, in factories and warehouses, in hospitals and churches, in offices and classrooms. God, we benefit from the labor of so many people, many of whom we never see. Thank you for their good work and faithful service. And thank you for our bird, Sherry. And thank you also for our market economy that provides jobs and benefits to so many people. May our work always glorify you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord. Your loving kindness be upon them who, who put, put their, their trust, trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Mm -hmm. 
Have mercy upon us, most, most merciful, merciful Father. In your compassion, compassion forgive, forgive us our, our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. My dear friends in Christ, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. We send our greetings to all of you in peace. This is a time to start our offertory, um, to go into our prayer of great thanksgiving. So we offer ourselves to you, holy God. And before we do that, I would like to know if anyone has any announcements to share. We will be staying on Zoom for September and hopefully we're planning to go live in October and we throw up ours there for COVID and all the medical people and all the people working hard because of this pandemic. Uh, your vestry at Emmanuel has worked hard. They've met twice to try to follow through on what should be done. And I give thanks for the hard work of the vestry of Emmanuel. So we pray to God and um, offer our thanksgiving for all that we are and all that we give. Bless our offerings, dear God, of the fragile dreams and hopes that we have, because they are the spiritual gifts which sustain our lives with your help. Receive, dear God, our prayers and all that we bring to you this day, for now we offer ourselves to. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to offer God thanks and praise. Honor and worship are indeed your due, our Lord and our God, through Jesus Christ. For you create all things, and by your will they were created, and for your glory they have their being. Therefore, with people of every nation, every tribe and language, with the whole church on earth and in heaven, Joyfully, we give you thanks and say, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. All glory and honor to you, God of grace, for you gave your only son, Jesus Christ, once for all on the cross to be the one perfect sacrifice for the sin of the world, that all who believe in him might have eternal life. So on the night before he died, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and he said to them, take and eat. This is my body now for you. It is given for you, and do this whenever you remember me. After supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And as often as you drink it, remember me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, in the sacrament of the suffering and death of your Son, we now celebrate the wonder of your grace and proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has Christ died. died. Christ is risen. Christ will come in glory. Redeemer God, rich in mercy, Infinite in goodness, we were far off until you brought us near, and our hands are empty until you fill them. As we share the spiritual communion through the power of your Holy Spirit, feed our souls with your heavenly food, renew us in your service, and unite us in Christ. For from you, and through you, and for you are all things. To you, most holy God, be the glory forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth 
as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us for e from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. In union, bless Jesus with all the faithful gathered online, all those present here together now, those who will be viewing this at a different time, and all those gathered around the world. We long to offer you praise and thanksgiving for creation and all the blessings of this life. We offer you praise and thanksgiving for the redemption won for us by the life, death, and resurrection of your son for the means of grace and the hope of glory. We believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament. And since we cannot at this time receive communion in person, we pray you to come into our hearts. We unite ourselves with you and embrace you with all our hearts, our souls, and our minds. Let nothing separate us from you. Let us serve you in this life until by your grace, we come to your glorious kingdom and unending peace. Amen. Let us take just a silent moment to be in communion with our Lord in silent prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your son, our savior, Jesus Christ. And for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you, as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Life is short, and we have too little time to gladden the hearts of those who travel the way with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. And may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. Let us go forth into the world, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
have a great week, everybody. Stay safe and warm and healthy. You as well. You well. See you next week. It was Bye. good to be with you all. Take hey, Pat. Care, everyone. How are you feeling, Pat? Good. Good? Doing well, thank you. Good, good, good. good. Hey, Helen joined. I can't believe how big Araceli has gotten. I know. Oh, uh, college next year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she likes that idea, apparently. <laughs> Have a great day, everyone. Nice to see everybody. Take care. Hey, Helen.